What was great about the early punk bands and early punk labels that were innovating and doing new things were that they were doing new things. You had labels like Sub Pop and you had Discord and Factory and all these labels started out of a necessity to release music with their values. One of the things that the music industry and the art industry is just catching up to now that the underground punk and hardcore scene knew a long time ago was the idea that exclusivity created value. You hear the term super serve the super fan often now because that's how people are monetizing their music. When downloading started and streaming, just selling music wasn't enough. You had to create product that spoke specifically to the super fan. We were doing that in 1995. We were creating limited edition posters, tapes, and vinyl. We were hand numbering things so that was special. So if you had the first number, it meant something more. Some of this was necessity because there wasn't the money to create mass amounts of product. The great thing about the underground scene was that everything was so personal. When you saw a band play, you were right in front of them. And then you talked to them at the merch table afterwards. Everything was DIY. They didn't wait around for someone to give them a check or to get signed, they just made it happen. We made things happen by hook or by crook. If I had to get the job where there was a photocopy machine to help everybody make flyers or print out the layouts for their vinyl or tapes, we did it. If you wanted to play a show, you made a show. There was also a connection between the subculture, the tribe that made it possible. When someone from the West Coast came to the East Coast, they would stay at each other's houses and put them up. I remember, Bands like AFI or, or Cave-In, like staying at my place or me staying at their place out in Berkeley. Just because we had no money to get hotel rooms and everything like that, we had to pick and choose where we were spending. So there were lessons learned that really everyone could learn from. When Dillinger first started, I didn't even really have a real guitar. I found a guitar that was hanging over a bar that said Michelob on it and I spray painted it silver and that was the first Dillinger guitar. We're actively playing shows and I didn't have an amplifier. Every show I asked someone to borrow their amplifier. Don't wait for the best gear. Don't wait for the best recording stuff. Don't wait for the best cameras to make a video or a movie. Just get to work. Just get to work and do it. This course is only available on soundfly.com.